friends, it's Laura Vinvertlow. I am right at two o'clock. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Um, I used to try to do StreamYard, but it's just easier for me to hop on like this, say a nice brief hello. Um, my name is Laura Vinvertlow. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I started um, in 2007. I've taught classes in person for years and I love it and I started doing videos I'm getting more and more comfortable with it and I want to reach out and have other people enjoy these classes as well so I'm offering this class is an online class where it's free to anybody uh, you can watch take notes measurements um, uh, there will not be a tutorial because I have the replay for the video and then um, if you order off the link that's posted in the comments, I, uh, $40, I will send you the card kits for free, including shipping. Now, what that'll be is two of each of the cards that you see today, and I will cut uh, like the designer's uh, blah, 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 embossing folder. Um, if I it uses one of those, I can do that. I just cannot stamp images. Hey, Katrina. Um, so you will have to have your own stamp sets. So that's another reason to have a, a wish list ready. So if you see something you like, you can jot it down and you can either order it now or save it for later. Um, I'm very close to my first incentive trip, so I'm really excited. Um, so everything counts between now and September. So all of you that have been helping me and cheering me on, I cannot be more grateful. Um, so if you want to share my page, uh, hop on to YouTube, follow me there. And then I will put a link to, um, in the comments after the video for you to subscribe to my weekly email. And that is where all the really good details are. So, um, I think I covered, oh yes, if you spend $50, I will throw in, um, oh gosh, I forgot what I put. Let me see, what did I put? <laughs> Oh, that's the wrong event. Doo, doo, doo. Okay. Oh, I got to turn down this volume. That's weird. Hold on. Technical difficulties. There we go. Now, I cannot handle an echo. Okay. Um, I'll have to go look and see. Oh, it's sequin back. Uh, adhesive back sequence is what I'll send you. Okay. Let's get started, and I'm going to do a quick search and um, switch. Oh, boy, I tell you. Stage right. Everybody's in underwear, right? Is that what they used to tell you? Hold on. Let me zoom in a little bit. Sorry for the dizziness. Is that good? Let me see how that goes. Hold on. I'm just trying to get it. There's like a slight delay. So if you make comments, I may not see them. I'm going to try my best to keep up with the comments. Okay. I think that's good because I want to make sure everybody can see. I know it's kind of crooked actually. And I'm so OCD. That's going to bug me. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. All right. So, we are going to make this adorable, I have it in my protective sleeve because I do have this class coming at 7.30 tonight, so if you're local, you want to come, just drop me a comment that you'd like to come and I'll get you set up. Um, so, we're going to make this uh, cute little card. I've been wanting to use this. There's just something peaceful about jars and spa and it just spoke to me and my friend Lisa, that's Norwex consultant. I thought it was perfect because it looks kind of like they're forever bottles. So it's the Rest, Relax, and Enjoy set. And um, what you will need, I've got a cheat sheet over here too. <laughs> Sorry. Because <laughs> I knew I was going to mess up anything. And I'm doing this card first just because it involves um, using masking paper or post-it notes. And I wanted to 
uh, make sure that that one, because the other two are really simple, because I've already pre-cut everything. So this is Misty Moonlight, and um, we just fold it in half. Um, I don't score because I find I have a better matchup here. Um, just folding it in half and using my bone folder. So the measurement for the card base is five and a half by eight and a half. And if you do score, you want to score it at, oh goodness, four and a fourth. Okay, next up will be your Knight of Navy. That's going to be a mat. And then we're going to have this uh, Countryside Inn. This is one of the ones that is on sale this month for 15% off. And there's bunny rabbits on the other side. But I'm trying to go kind of for like a peaceful... Okay, I thought I had everything out. It never fails. Oh, there it is. It's hiding. Okay. Never fails. Okay, so I, I am a stamp and seal person. I liked Fast Fuse, too, when we used to carry that, so I don't know. Um, I saw a tip, and ever since I learned that tip, uh, I felt, I, I'm just very confident in using it. And let me make sure I'm not, let me find my card. Yes, I can go ahead and put it down. Okay, I did not use any dimensionals to put this to that. So what you do is you pull it. And you don't want to go side to side. You just kind of want to lift up forward. And it releases it. And it has it all primed and ready for you to go. I'm going to check for comments. Okay, looks like Katrina. Just looking because I don't see them on my iPad in front of me, which is kind of weird. Okay, so that card base is ready to go. And then this is for the inside, so I'll just stick that there. And I've already run this piece. Uh, oh, the inside piece was... And if, if you... Um, this will be, have a replay, so you can always go back and get the measurements. But if you get the card kit, it's all going to be pre-cut for you. The Knight of Navy is 4 inches by 5 and a fourth. And this strip is one and a half by five and a fourth. And then I cut this knot. This is a lot of layers. I went a little nuts, sorry. <laughs> um, this knot of navy is, where to go? Four by three. And then this is just a little bit smaller. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to get out, I used basic gray. I like basic gray for sentiment sometimes because um, it's a little softer than the black. I do like memento black, but um, sometimes you're using subtle colors and I find that pebble path and the basic gray are much easier to, um, they're like softer on the eye. That makes any sense. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm inking up the little candle, which could also be a jar of cream, with the basic gray. And you notice I'm using the top part of a sticky notepad. And I should have gotten out the masking paper, but it was too late by the time I thought about it. I'm going to stamp it on this post-it note. And this is called masking, and that's two layers. So what I'm going to do is cut this out really quickly. And thankfully, it's an easy shape. You can do this with a little bit more intricate shapes. You can make trees look like they're in a forest. This kind of helps you make it look like things are, I guess, two-dimensional, because it's not really three-dimensional. Um, so, what I'm going to do is put this here. I think I'm going to go down a little bit more on this uh, zoom in here. I think that might be easier for you guys to see. Okay, so what it's going to, yeah, that's better. Okay, so I've got the bottle, and <laughs> this I want to be further down because I did it the other way, and it looked like it was a floating candle. It was really funny. Okay, so I did that one. And let me put this over to the side. Actually, I'll just 
just put right here. And then the smaller droplet bottle or dropper bottle. And I kind of put them in different um, positions so they kind of look um, like they're, you know, I can't think of what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right, so I didn't do this up front when I first made the card because it was something I added at the very end. So it's easier to do this now because you already have this piece right here. But I wanted it to look like it had uh, you had some floating herbs in there. So let me put that over to the side. And then this one, I purposely did that to remind myself not to stamp the whole thing because it's way bigger than the bottle. So then that way, if it's off the side of the stamp, I remember not to um, ink the whole thing. And you know, I'm okay with it not fully going down. Oops, oh well. Um, because it's supposed to look like something that's been, you know, how you have uh, vinegar oils or bath salts and they have like the um, lavender already floating in it. Okay, this is where the magic happens. Oh, that's a good sticky note. All right, pull it up. So see, I have a nice cute little spot where the candle goes. Because in my card, it's a candle. You can certainly do um, okay, excuse my head if, if you see it, but I have to have it there. Okay, so what I did is I, see, and now it looks like it's in front of the other two bottles. The hardest part of the card. The rest of it is coloring. And I have an uncanny habit of... Closing these ink pads quickly because I will either stick my hand in them or ink up the wrong. And so then you put your cute little droppers and um, what is that thing called? Pump. I'm telling you, it's not like I'm scared of talking. Anybody that knows me in person knows that I have no problem talking. And then I made it a three wick candle because it looked kind of weird with one. So that's the majority of the card. I'm going to go ahead and ink up the sentiment, which is treat yourself. So I thought this would be a really cute, um, tuck a little gift card inside and then I'm going to color it of course so I found and I wish you could have seen all the different color combinations I came up with trying to get this the way I wanted it to look in my head so I'm doing the dark to kind of give it that uh, more dimension to the I love the stamping blends for this and I like to do the darker colors first some people like to do the light colors and I'm using mossy meadow they come in a combo pack so you get the light and the dark of the same tint and then I go behind, oh gosh I just got the flame whoops okay I think I saved it in time And then what I love is it just, and because this is a water-based ink and these are alcohol, that's why it's not smearing. And same with the, all the, these ink pads, anything that's an ink pad, these are water-based. So you can use any of our water-based inks, not just the Memento, to use with the Stampin' Blends. And I'm going to go back and kind of make this more. And the more you color over it, even with the same color. See how it's starting to blend in and become more cohesive. So it's 
starting to kind of take its bottles. Okay, I like that. I'm happy for that. All right, so those go to the side. And then I did soft sea foam. And I think I'm just using the dark one for this because I wanted to have something um, a little more subtle, but I wanted to stay in the green. Oh, sorry if that's loud. Okay. All right, so we're done with that one. And then with the candle, I went ahead and used Balmy Blue. And again, I took the dark. And Stampin' really good with their artwork. If you notice, there's like lines right here. That is like the natural shading. So I tend to kind of follow their guidelines because those concept artists that they have at Stampin' Up! are amazing. I'm creative, but not to an artistic standpoint. I just, I'm in awe of people that can just draw and things look this good. I draw stick figures. That's why I have to have stamps. <laughs> All right, so we're almost done with the coloring, and then I'm going to move on to the other two. And then I'm using Daffodil Delight for the candle, and then I'm going in with the darker Daffodil Delight for the inside of the flame. And then to finish this off, oh, is this the dark one? I hope it's the dark one. You want to make sure these are shut because they are alcohol based. They tend to um, dry out if you leave them open. Okay, so I'm using the smaller tip because I have more control. And see how, again, I'm following the lines that Stampin' Up! has given us. And then I'm going to go back behind it. and blend it all together and then now it looks like it naturally is shading for pretty much <laughs> all right and what card is not complete without wink of stella i have four or five of these at all times so i'm going to do the and see it's mixing a little bit because this is going to mix with the water based which is the mossy meadow that I stamped at the very beginning. So you might see a little smearing, but you know what? When things float in the water, I think they kind of get like that, don't they? Okay, oh yeah, the flames. There we go. Okay, so, got the treat yourself. And then I'm going to glue down, if I, I just had it. Oh, is that thick? Let me make sure I don't have any comments. Okay, looks like I'm good. Katrina, I think you're the only one on. But that's okay, because it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Not everybody can, that's why I do the replay. And that's why it'll be uploaded to YouTube as well. So when you get your card kits, you can go back. And if you don't have a stamp set, you can use something similar. Um, it's just a policy. Uh, it's a trademark policy uh, from Stampin' Up! that we are not allowed to, it's considered selling the images, so I cannot pre-stamp these for you, so that's why you have to um, find your own if you don't order all these stamp sets, because I don't expect everybody to order a hundred of stamps in one order, because then you need to become a demonstrator, because <laughs> you at least get a discount off of all that. Um, and if you're definitely interested in that, I would love to have you on our team because our team has a lot of fun together. We get together once a quarter and have a fun little party. Um, the next one's October 12th. Uh, you're welcome to come as a um, guest for an opportunity night. And then um, I'm going to do the bow offside. But, oh, actually, no, I'm not because I want you guys to see and if you're about to hear a big thud, it's because Sheldon's about to jump up on my counter. I hope not, but I have both cats here. I have one sleeping in a paper pumpkin box, which I will show you before the end of the video. I don't know how Jasper fits in it, but he does. 
and Beach just sits here while I craft and he's my little buddy. He loves my crafting buddy. Okay, so I'm, hold on, I'm trying to, it always goes so quickly when I'm by myself and really listening and watching. There we go. Okay, so what I did is I took both and um, just tied both pieces. I cut it in half and then tied both pieces. Oh yeah, these are light. So then I'm gonna, whoops. Where did I put my glue? Where did I put the glue? Never mind. It's tied around that. Okay, good. Now I will put the gems on it later just because we spent so much time on this first card. But how cute is that? Give me some thumbs up if you like that one. I'm going to do a little bit closer just to make sure you can see them. All right. That was a hard one. Not hard. I would say just involved because you did the masking. And we also did the um, coloring. Next up, we are going to use, didn't even use that ink pad, yay. Okay, we're going to use the Happiest Day Bundle, or not bundle, uh, stamp set. Let me get all the goodies out. What is everybody's favorite new ink color? These are my two that I seem to be gravitating towards the most. Um, it's the Petunia Pop and the Summer Splash. Okay, so we're gonna make this cute, adorable card. Super easy. We've already got everything pulled out for us. <clears throat> Sorry, my allergies have been going off and Crazy land, and this is using Happiest Days. And at first, I was kind of like, oh, "That's cute," but I really like this saying right here: "You make me feel like glitter in the sun." I just love that saying, so I got it, and I like this. And then I started seeing cards with this, so then I was like, "Okay, I have to have it now." So that's kind of how it works sometimes. <laughs> and we're also using the Summer Splash bordered ribbon. And I've already pre-cut Oh, sorry. Jasper's like, just got jumped out of the skin. I went ahead and cut the, oh. Oh, it's because it's a, um, okay. Perennial Postage is the name of the die. I just have the one die out for the class tonight. Um, but I already pre-cut it. And you noticed I've kept this part. I like to paper save. I don't want to waste a whole whole piece of basic white and cut this one out. So I will show you how simple this is and I pre-scored this because we did this as a tent card. So Summer Splash is your card base and the card base is 11 by 4 and a fourth and you scored at five and a half. These I do score. For some reason I cannot fold these without getting like a bunch of wrinkles up here. And I'm definitely OCD so I don't like to have um, stuff like that so I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of the seal here <coughs> and then this will act as the white mat that you see And when we come back with the, this is the, oh goodness gracious, this is why I have cheat sheets. It is also on sale. It's the Unbounded Beauty, and it's five by three and three fourths. And the basic white was four and five and one fourth. And that's where you paper save, because you cut this out and then you put it down. Why do I? Um, I want to glue this down. All righty. Might have 
left this one a little short, but that's okay. Once we get the final image on there, I don't think anybody's going to notice. And you know what I should have done? Oops. I should have tucked this underneath before I did that. Maybe I should have used dimensionals on it. Okay. Let's see if I can tuck that sucker in there. I'll go back and reinforce it. So see, people always say, oh, you're always horizontal. Yeah, look, I have all the same mistakes everybody else does. Everybody can do this. I love it. There's boo-boos, and you know what? Those boo-boos are covered up by other embellishments. Okay. Right. Here's my take your pick tool. This is a must-have. I had a post earlier in the week about all the benefits of the take your pick tool. Hold it a little too tight. Okay, this was supposed to be a quick card. Hello. Stop. There we go. All right, that's good enough for right now. Okay, so we'll put that to the side. And then I'm going to first do the wishing you the happy birthday. We're going to use the, I'm using the black on this one because I wanted more of a uh, crisp statement and um, I wanted the dragonflies to really show up. I'm going to sit, put the wishing you happy birthday. And then I'm going to do the dragonflies. Why is this weird? I wish I had my piece of paper. Oh well, it's water based. I can wash it off. Okay, so there's one here. And I always say there's a rule of three because it looks more even to the eye. Or you just make sure it's five if you decide to go. Um, if you, um, it just, the, two just looks weird to me. I don't know what it is. And then we are going to use, this is kind of two-step stamping, and that's why the photopolymer are really good. God, these things go everywhere. Okay, photopolymer are really good. As soon as you can see where you're about to stamp. And I'm just going to light that up. Moving along. Oh, well, it's, it's going to be covered up. Okay, so there's the petunia pop in the bottom of the wings, and then we're going to go back behind it with. I did not use that stamp. Okay. Go back behind it with Summer Splash once I figure out what I did with it. Didn't I just have that out? No, I put it back in my ink pad. Thank God I looked behind me. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to be too much of a pickup fairy. That's what my dad used to call my stepmom. The pick em up fairy. I'll come back to that one because I'm like, honey, you're being weak. Sorry, I can see my head. I, gotta, I can see the um, black better when I have my... And yes, there are times that I... Don't get that right. I'm not perfect, but I don't think anybody's really going to notice. And my saying is, if somebody doesn't like a handmade card that you sent them, guess what? They don't get a card anymore. It's, that's just not nice. Okay, so we're almost done with this card. I'm going to go ahead and do dimensionals for this, and I use every bit of my dimensionals. So I'll just go and cut these around, and you can also save them for those corners of uh, shaker cards. Oh, no. Ah, there we go. Hey, got one out of the way. And I have trained my club girls really well. Look at that. <laughs> so, I have stamp club here once a month. And I have three different days that I taught days and times that I do it. So, we have a lot of fun. And I should have done this first. But I like to do this to give it a little bit more. I'm going to, I'll fix that. 
soft one, but there. Just gives it a little bit of splatter. I feel like I forgot to tell you dimensions. That's good. And then we're going to do the Wink Estella on the wings. You have to be careful with these. Sometimes um, I need to go back. Oh, see, I didn't do this one perfect. Okay, so see how now I'm going to go back with the purple. And see, this is where you can make it blend together because it's water based. The Wink Estella does kind of act like something to blend those colors in. So now it's not so white and noticeable. And then we're going to go. See, this is what I'm saying. I'm just somebody, I just don't like a mess. So, yes, my blessed husband, he's EF3 and my son's EF1. So, it's hard to keep the house clean. Iridescent faceted gems. These are really cool. When I first saw them in the catalog, I didn't think much of them. But they just really add a nice pop. I'm going to do this one. So I'm just going up underneath it with the take your pick tool. And what's nice about the take your pick tool is look at this. And it comes with a stylus tip that you can interchange here. Uh, and the stylus has a fine paper and thicker paper. And then this just screws on and off. And this is separate. It comes with two foam pieces and that way you can take your dies and roll and get all those little, if you notice in your dies, there's little holes to help pop out the, um, the paper, because sometimes it gets stuck. Okay, so here's our second card. And now we're gonna move on to the last one. I'm gonna grab everything for that one. And all this stuff over to the side, so you guys can tell me it's to the side, Laura, it's to the side. <clears throat> oh, that's where those went. <laughs> okay. So, we are going to use... Oh, I have... I use a three-tiered rolling cart. And it's really good. This is... I really like how this one turned out. But yes, I think it's so much easier having a cart because I can just easily go in and out of it when people are here or if I'm doing my classes like this. So, <clears throat> I am using the Layers of Beauty. This comes with a layered stencil that are, or masking that is just gorgeous. But we're going to use it on a more simple level today. Um... And then this one is simply said it goes with our new mix and match ephemera and envelopes. But I just like it because it's got all the great sayings in it. This one's one of my favorites. This one, and I like how it's got the different fonts as well. That is what we're going to be using today. And let me put this to the side so now you've seen the card. So the Country Woods is yet another piece, uh, another piece of paper, another um, paper that is on sale at 15% off through the end of this month. And I'm trying to find the measurement. Da, da, da. Okay, I did not write the measurement down. So this one is three and a half by four and three fourths. And then I ran a piece of Blackberry Bliss, and it's four by five and one fourth. And I do believe, yeah, this is uh, seven eighths. And I make it a little bit longer because I make two and a half. I'm going to use the um, I forgot the name of this one. I think it's the Lace Take Your Pick Label Punch. 
And then we have the Moody Mauve is our hard base. And that is the eight and a half by five and a half. And again, I like to just go corner to corner. And then I kind of just have this, I've been doing this for so long, I don't even think about it when I do it. So I have to remind myself that some people don't know. Okay, and I wanted to make this distressed. And now be careful when you use scissors. I should dig out my, you know what, I should dig those out. There's cutter tools that go with the take my pick that probably would make this a lot easier. But I don't want to take the time. But I'm just basically roughing up the edges to kind of give it more of a distressed look. Because this is the old fashioned way that I learned back in 2007 before we had all these fun fancy tools. And we didn't have the diamond cut machine yet. Funny story about that is when we first released that, and we used to use the Big Shot by Sizzix. And I told myself, what am I going to do with this machine? Why would I want to spend that much money? I mean, I'm never going to use it. I will tell you what, I still have two Big Shots, and I have two of our brand that I love so much better because they're wider and they're so much more compact. I have two of the big ones and two of the little ones. So yes, I guess I do like them. <laughs> okay, so this is gonna go down, did I do this kind of catty wall? No, I didn't do that part. Theory, so let me just put that down. And this is the Distress Tile Embossing Folder. It's one of my absolute favorites. I am still a vintage girl in my heart. Always will be vintage. All right, so now I'm gonna ink this up. Where's my pencil? Great, there you are. So this is why the carton comes in handy because I don't want to go across the room. Okay, so to me it's easier when you have the bigger stamps to take the ink pad and go directly down. And you just wanna lightly tap. You don't wanna smash it down because then you're gonna have the halos. And you can tell this is a very well-loved stamp. I've used it with lots of pinks and other colors. As you can see, it still stamps wonderfully, regardless of the color. And I'm telling you that more for myself because I like things neat. Okay, so now we have our image. Oh, there's the card. So I kind of need a little bit of guidance here. So I did the Moody Mauve, and I use the I love sponge daubers. Uh, there's five in a pack. I can't remember how much they cost. Seven fifty. Don't quote me on that. Because you get so much control, and you know blending brushes are wonderful too. But I like those for other purposes. And so we're just going to do it in a circle because I want it to be a little bit lighter as I go out. So I make the centers because I think that's kind of how roses are because they're darker in the center. And they kind of, very, uh, the, what is that word I'm looking for? You know, ombre. Whew, there we go. I was losing my mind there. All right, so. Okay, yeah, I did do that. I had to take, I did this um, differently um, earlier and it came out too dark. Forgot that I did just kind of go over it with all Moody Mall. I did Blackberry Bliss and it was just too dark. So I was trying to just go for a nice soft look and it just made it too in your face. Okay, so there's that one. And I just think already it looks really pretty. Ooh, sorry about that. That was loud. And then I just used my label maker on small and I misspelled mauve. But you know what? I can't see anymore now that I've gotten older. So it is what it is. Um, and I'm going to go back and use my Fresh Freesia. And I just kind of lightly dab through here and get the smaller flowers. If I tried other pinks, this one was just like the most complimentary to this. I'm missing a flower somewhere. That's okay. I'll keep it out because I'll probably have to go back. So 
So now we go our final color. And then that will be Lost Lagoon. And I'm just kind of taking, I'm more going on the edge for these smaller areas to make it a little bit more um, controlled. But you know, it's kind of like a watercolor. So if you get outside the lines, who cares? It still looks pretty. And let's see. We live in Texas. We are getting a very small break. Because it's been like 105 last week, and then the last two days have been 96. And it's just amazing. That feels so cool after having 105. <laughs> The evening is even less. Okay, so I'm done with that one. And then put that here. Did I erase that already? Yes, I did. Of course I went. Why, why did I even ask my question? Uh, that question? So I'm just going to go in and yank all the flowers. Just ignore it. And if you kind of run out, you just kind of squeeze it. I'm doing it to the side because sometimes it'll just gush out. I'd rather have it gush out there or I can keep using it than all over my projects because I've done that before. Okay, one of these two. And these little buds. I kind of just left those alone. So now we're done with that. And I've got something else. And then there's the hello. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. What's nice is that you, um, I forgot which, I think that's half an inch, seven eighths of an inch, and an inch you can use in this. I went a little too, it's not exact. I think it's going to be kind of tight. Okay. And then I always like to flip over to see, oops, get it right up. So there. That'll give me that little, now I can get it out. That's why I like to do them longer. <laughs> there we go. No, no, there we go. Come on. I'm going to cut part of that off anyway. Okay. Go put that up. I'm going to do thinking of you on this one just to have the, something different. Oh, basic stuff. Tell you, basic red, I use it all the time for sentiments. So this one's going to be uh, jut out just a little bit more than the other. But that's okay, that's why I did the longer one in case I wanted to change up my sentiments. So I'm going to put those up. And now we are going to put the final touches and we will be almost finished with this card class today. Excuse me. So first I want to put this down before I put gems and the sentiment on, just so I know where to layer it. Alright. Okay. Check this out again. I think I, yep, I stick it in all. And this one I did a little off center. Just to give it a little more visual interest. And then we'll just cut off a little bit of that. I have one pair of my snips that I love. And I keep them with a scissor charm because they're super sharp. The other ones have definitely gotten use. Oh, yes. I'm in the middle. Yep. No, I was doing it right. So I put a little bit of adhesive on the back. And then. Cut about eight inches, and this is in the Basics Twine Essential Pack. There's several different colors: black, a cream, a white, and then this grayish color. I like it for uh, if I just want to mix up instead of just doing the, 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 um, the usual linen thread, which I have tons of. Oh, and that does remind me. So if you've ever shopped. And this was taught to me this way, and it makes so much sense. When you cook, don't you have salt and pepper? And your 
typical staples like milk and stuff. I consider linen thread, not this one, but like regular linen thread and the basic rhinestones are like my salt and pepper. So those will not be included. This stuff will be included in your card kit. The pre cut out, um, not cut out, dry embossed, that'll be included in your card kit. And you can always use another floral if you don't have this set. It'll be just as pretty. All right, last thing is our little gem, or these are the sequins back. There's a peacock, a pretty peacock that's in here, but I've used all those. Um, but that's the one I will send for orders of $50 or more. And the shipping is included with uh, the, the packet of pa um, the cards. And there we go. So in case you don't see the link, I'm going to go ahead and put this down. There's my online store, but if you use this, it links it to, and this is the link that lets me know you want the card kit. And um, order by Tuesday the 27th, and you will get the free card kit with a $40 order. Or uh, $50 gets the sequin, the adhesive back sequins. And then you're also just welcome to enjoy the class. Um, but please subscribe to my YouTube if you're on YouTube. And in my YouTube bio and my Facebook bio, I have where you can sign up for my emails. And I send them out weekly with specials and promos and tips and all sorts of love. And again, thank you to anybody who's um, ordering from me because it's really helping me get closer and closer and closer uh, to the first incentive trip I've ever earned with Stampin' Up! I'm really excited. So, um, I will throw a party. <laughs> but I love to spoil my customers. So, I appreciate, appreciate each and every one of you. And if you're going to be here local tonight, I will see you tonight. God bless.